ACS Blog is here with Jeffrey Stone, a constitutional law expert. Professor Stone, can you tell us a little bit about your recent article, The Framers Constitution, and how people can use the principles in that to talk about the Constitution and counter sort of conservative originalist ideas? Sure. Well, th- I think one of the real problems that we have had in the last uh, 40 years in the United States is that uh, conservatives have uh, effectively uh, taken control of the public discourse and the academic discourse um, about the proper role of, of courts and about uh, constitutional interpretation. And the idea of judicial restraint and the idea of originalism have become dominant themes in, uh, in the way we've come to think about what courts should be doing or not doing. Uh, and that's a problem because it's both wrong-headed on its own terms uh, and it misleads people about what courts are actually doing. So it's wrong-headed in the sense uh, that it purports to put forth a methodology, either judicial restraint or originalism, uh, both of which, in fact, are deeply flawed. And the Framers' Constitution, the document, uh, is designed to uh, illustrate why they are deeply fraud- flawed and why they don't, in fact, uh, put forth a coherent or persuasive theory of constitutional interpretation. Um, and th- that they, beyond that, Uh, They fail to recognize the real responsibility of courts, uh, which is to uh, fulfill the the mission that the framers themselves understood courts would play, and that's largely to be a a corrective for the dangers of majoritarian abuse. Um, And then the other aspect of of what's wrong with the the general public conception of judicial review is that, that the public tends to actually believe that conservative judges and justices behave in a way that can be explained and justified in terms of judicial restraint and originalism, when in fact uh, the actual jurisprudence of the existing majority on the Supreme Court and many uh, Republican-appointed judges on the lower courts uh, does not in fact fit within either the conception of judicial restraint or the conception of originalism. And in areas like uh, decisions that invalidate affirmative action policies, um, that protect uh, corporations in the realm of political speech, um, that protect uh, gun owners in the exercise of their rights. Uh, those types of decisions cannot be explained at all, either by judicial um, passivism or by originalism. And it's basically a form of conservative judicial activism, uh, which uh, may or may not be justified, but which is certainly hypocritical relative to the uh, um, ideology and methodology that conservative uh, academics and jurists purport to be applied.